On the first night of our fifth grade Chavatona Camp Shy, we were given the option to either go on a night hike in the woods or go stargazing. Being the daredevils we were, me and my good friend and bunkmate Julia decided to take the hike. Mr. Zane was leading the trip and everything started off pretty smoothly. About 20 minutes into the hike, Mr. Zane started to lose his sense of direction. Soon, we realized that somehow we managed to make it all the way to the other side of the lake. We were off the path and completely lost. Julie and I were starting to panic while Mr. Zane was trying to find a way back. Everyone was freaking out, but we decided to start walking and see where it took us. As the group attempted, attempted to find their way back to camp, Julie and I were frantically holding on to each other, screaming at every single branch that brushed against us. Julia thought that the best way to calm down was to sing camp songs, because camp songs made us happy. So with shaky voices, we sang some of our favorite camp songs, helping each other over and under each branch and bush. After what felt like forever, we finally made it back to camp safe and in one piece. I am so grateful for Julia to be, for being there for me when I was afraid. I will forever be grateful for the amazing friends that I made at this amazing school. The friends that I made at Bernard Zell are one of a kind. They are friends that I have known for my entire life and will be with me through thick and thin. Have a root. Your friends will help you find your way. In fifth grade, I didn't find the prospect of regularly visiting the elderly in assisted living facilities for Project Rote Thrilling in the slightest. On the contrary, the idea of these awkward conversations with semi-lucid seniors had my future made me simply squeamish. I was overcome with dread in the days leading up to our first visit, but all that changed over the course of our first visit to the cell phone. As I entered the facility, I found a table with a resident and struck up conversation as we had been coached to do. At first, I felt incredibly shy and a bit uncomfortable as I had anticipated I would, sitting and chatting with a person I didn't know at all. But to my surprise, the resident I sat with began to ask me the questions and I soon relaxed. This wasn't so hard after all. After all, these questions allowed me to open up, become less shy, and make friends with this person. Before I knew it, an hour had elapsed and I hadn't noticed at all. We visited many more times that year and over the span of these visits I learned the importance of stepping outside my comfort zone. By doing so I grew as a person while doing a mitzvah in the process. When my teacher instructed us all to sit down in a circle on the rug on the first day of sixth grade, I felt almost as if I was in a new school because I saw so many unfamiliar faces. Most of the friends I had made the year prior were in a different class than I was, so I really didn't know anyone in my class. Funny enough, I ended up sitting next to one of the people who would soon become one of my best friends. I just didn't know it at the time. We all went around in a circle, introduced ourselves, and shared details about our summer. When it was my turn, I shared that I went to an art camp during the summer, and the girl next to me lit up and said, I like art too. Thereafter, we got to know each other a lot better and learned that we did not only have one thing in common, but we shared many interests. I, s I learned from this experience to always keep an open mind when meeting new people because they might just become your closest friend. At the start of sixth grade approach, I found myself being more and more nervous. I was set to begin at Bernard Zell, and I was excited. I had loved my shadow day the year before, but as the first gr day grew near, I felt my anxiety ramp up. Would my new classmates be nice to me now that I was really joining them? Would the teachers be strict? Thankfully, everyone from the students to teachers and administrators too welcomed me with open arms and made me feel like I was part of a new community. One specific memory that I have from my, one of my first weeks of school is when I was feeling super overwhelmed and I had a complete breakdown. I remember my advisor, Mr. Mather, told me to follow him down the hallway. I had no idea what to expect. Was he going to yell at me for crying in class? To my relief, he showed concern for me in my transition to a new school and wanted to do anything he could to support me. He and everyone were there to help me during this time. There's nothing like hiding in the woods with someone you hardly know to lay the foundations of a lasting friendship. In sixth grade, on our outdoor education trip at the Loyola Retreat Center, the teachers were intent on taking full advantage of the beautiful outdoors and planned a game of predator versus prey, a combination of tag and hide and seek. The adults instructed us to hide and wait until we were caught by a predator. In the off chance that we survived, they would blow a whistle at the end of the game to indicate we could come out. Julia and I quickly found a great hiding spot out of sight under some large bushes. I didn't know Julia well, but we chatted about everything and got to know each other pretty well in a short time. 
An hour passed. We were amazed that nobody had found us yet. We hadn't heard a whistle and we were committed to this hiding spot, so we stayed put. We had an amazing place to hide and good company, so there was no pressing reason to go anywhere. Before we knew it, we had been hiding for nearly three hours. We emerged from our secret lair and presented ourselves to the predators. When the teacher saw us, a look of horror spread across their faces. We may have been forgotten about that day, but it resulted in a friendship that I cherish to this day. If you know me, you know I've never met a sport I don't like. Whether it's running weave drills in basketball practice, or knocking dingers into left field, or analyzing old football footage, I love it all. But there was one sport I never liked, volleyball. I just didn't see the point. Teams of people standing around, waiting to knock a ball over a net to each other. How was that fun? So in seventh grade, when the fall season came around, I had a hard choice to make. Should I play this lesser sport or sit around without something sporty to occupy my time? The only thing I was told by my family and friends was how much I would love it. But deep down, I was nervous I wouldn't be very good and might embarrass myself by failing at something new. After a lot of internal debate, I finally decided to give it a try. What's the worst that happens, I thought to myself. I can just quit at any time if I really want to. The night before the first practice, I was extremely nervous because I didn't have any experience compared to my friends who had started playing the year before. But when I walked in on the first day, my friends and coaches were supportive and got me involved right away. Volleyball is now a sport that I love playing and it has taught me not to be afraid to try new things. Oh, Matt. Have courage to try new things. Makeup applied, costume draped and tied. I heard my cue and strolled onto the stage for the first time for my first scene in Charlotte's Web, the seventh grade play. Though I had run my lines over and over again and focused during every rehearsal, the moment the spotlight hit my face and I saw Blum full of audience members, I froze. The nerves struck over. I had lost my words. For the life of me, I could not remember my lines. Time stood still. Next to me, a sympathetic classmate filled it in for me, saying my lines as if it was hers. When I exited the stage, all my classmates were, were, here, were there to comfort me. It's all right, they said, no big deal. I'd been nervous to go back on stage, lest I froze up again, the support of my classmates gave me confidence I to walk back on out there and nail my lines flawlessly. Bernard Zell's experience showed me that a supportive cast of characters can make anyone thrive in any situation. Vayahafta Lirikov Kamoha, support one another. Most seventh graders described the trip to Washington DC as a highlight of the year. But for me, it was anything but that. At the time, I was struggling with a lot of anxiety and depression, which led to multiple panic attacks that have prevented me from doing some of the fun activities on the trip. So when I heard that our flight home was delayed seven hours, you can imagine how I felt. This is the cherry on top of this horrible trip, I thought to myself. However, what I didn't know at the time was that this would be a bonding experience for all of us. Once I settled into the airport, my mindset shifted. I looked around and saw my classmates sulking and looking generally disappointed, and then it dawned on me. We're all in this together, I thought. Those five words changed my trip and the rest of my year. At that point, I realized that I could connect with people I barely knew and open up to my peers. Talking to them helped me gain confidence in my ability to connect with others, and I gained friendships that I didn't think I would ever have. Having this experience changed my life, and it makes me look at the trip now as a positive experience. During the toughest of times, it is necessary that we have friendships to get through it all. Chaverut. Friendship is enough. On the first day of my eighth grade year, I got to see all of my friends after having a summer of fun in the sun. I was jumping with joy. Just kidding. On the first day of my eighth grade year, I was sitting in bed at home recovering from getting hit by a car. And you might say that I was far from being able to jump with joy. I couldn't believe that I had to miss my last first day at, of school at Bernard Zell. 
there would be no cheesy welcome Google Slides, no sharing what we did over the summer in five words during each class, there would be no tour of the new building, and there would be no setting up my Google Drive for my eighth grade year. All I had was a doctor's appointment and two pints of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. At the end of the school day, I got a FaceTime call from my cousin Ruby. I expected her to tell me all about the first day of school. But when I answered the call, there was a big surprise. When I answered, there was a group of my classmates huddled around the phone, screaming things like, oh my God, I miss you, and oh my God, are you okay? I was so happy that I got to spend that five minutes FaceTiming with my peers and get the warm beginning of the year that I was hoping for. Over my 10 years at Bernard's Zell, I have always been taught to give back to my community. We have done countless service projects and tons of service days, but one of the things I've learned from all this giving back is that it's a lifelong endeavor, something that never gets old and always calls me to act. It's not a sport you play for one year and then quit. It's not a flute you own but don't really know how to play, and it's not a dance class you attend once and then quit because you don't really know how to dance. Each individual project and act of service is important on its own, but my decade of acting in the service of others has become a journey, as cheesy as that may sound, one which continues to drive me. Earlier this year, I took up sewing to make bags for period products for women in need. Now, with my newfound skills and sewing machine at hand, I begin to sew masks for my friends and family. I've now moved on to sewing masks to donate to hospitals. If Bernard has taught me one thing, it's that when everything feels out of your control, the one thing you can always do is help others. Ahava, always give back to your community. After four years of playing basketball together, you would think that our eighth grade team would have our plays and passes down to a science. But ironically, it was a competitive team scrimmage that really brought us together. To make the game as fair as possible, the lineups were picked by the captains, Jack Davis and I, in a closed door draft. Throughout that day leading up to the game, each team was talking lots of trash to each other, and we were all very focused on winning. But for my team, the strategy was simple. Work together and put our trust in each other. In a game like this, obviously everyone wanted to be the star, but we knew that individuals wouldn't win us the game. A cohesive team would win us the game. When the scrimmage began, my team got off to a great start, setting each other up for easy baskets and taking a big lead. We worked together and the substitutions went perfectly. The other team, however, was yelling at each other and fighting the entire time. The result of working together for my team? A blowout victory against our opponents, not to mention a super fun experience for us. The scrimmage really helped our entire 8th grade team grow as a whole because the losing side learned that without teamwork you can't be successful, and the winning side learned that that when working together, the game becomes more successful and fun. This game, whether we knew it or in the moment or not, set us up for a more successful season. All in all, what I learned from this experience was that you always need to work together, otherwise you can't thrive together. Achrayut, teamwork makes the dream work. We all have an idea of the perfect bonding moment to have with your friends, right? Some people might think it would be banding together to complete a task while others may think it would be coming together during a time of need. There are so many ways you could bond with your friends, but you definitely wouldn't expect it to be sitting on the floor of an empty classroom at 2.30 a.m. laughing at a Cards Against Humanity card that just says, bees? But that's exactly how it happened for me on our eighth grade Shabbaton lock-in. One minute, we were, sitting in a sh we were all sitting in a circle, just chilling, and the next minute we were screeching about a badminton game we had just lost. After 10 years together, I didn't think our grade could see each other in new ways, but we still managed to get even closer during the lock-in. We all bonded with each other in so many different and unlikely ways. Whether it was revealing in, in a sharing circle, applying face masks, or sneaking Oreos away from the teachers. For me, it was playing Cards Against Humanity at 2.30 a.m. It's these little moments that I will take with me. Kahila to find community in unlikely places. I have been part of the Bernardzo community ever since I was born. As a toddler, I went to morning meetings with my dad and attempted to roller skate with him when he taught PE, but it never ended well. I have loved this school forever, but I never could have imagined spending a night there. But then it happened, the eighth grade lock-in. I tried to convince my parents to let me stay home. They didn't budge. I reluctantly went and expected to hate it, but I was wrong. I made new connections with classmates and built upon the old ones. 
My favorite part was hanging out in the gym with everyone while playing ping pong, basketball, and spike ball. The best part though was the nighttime. All of the boys shared one room and it was pretty chaotic, but also really fun. Through the chaos, I learned a very valuable lesson that I will carry with me wherever I go. The lesson I learned is to always have a positive mindset and go into things and expect the best outcome. When I walk through the doors to high school, I will be ready for a new chapter in my life and I will always maintain that same positive mindset. Every day in Ms. Dominguez's math class in room 404, the number one item on the agenda is torture. But our class really started on the couches in the back corner of the room. Whenever it was time for math, we would rush to those couches. Whether it was squishing into a human sandwich or seeing how many people we could fit onto one couch, it was our tradition. My math class has been together for two years now. We have grown together, so learning and working together comes naturally. Even though there were times throughout eighth grade where I was so ready to move on and graduate, math class could always be a bright light in my day where I knew I could be challenged and I wasn't afraid to put myself out there. But next year, we will all be at different schools in different math classes, making new traditions with our peers. I don't want to leave this amazing place, but I know I'm ready for whatever high school throws at me because I will strive to make new traditions with my new classmates in order to feel that same connection I felt on the couches in room 404. Shalshalat Hakabala. Don't be afraid to make new traditions.